When everything goes right, a football play is a thing of beauty and excitement. But the good moments don't come easily. Getting ready to make the play picture perfect on Saturday is rough and tough, mentally and physically. For some Ball fans, the moment most remembered from 1972 was a moment of shock. A victory over Alabama turned into a defeat. The Tide's Terry Davis runs for a touchdown. Alabama scores twice in the final two minutes to overtake the Vols. A moment of shock and frustration. And this, I believe, is the bitterest frustration that it I've ever gone through, at least in the football sense anyway. One of the low points of my career was after the Alabama game. And then one of the high points was seeing men come back after defeat like that, come back to finish up the season and play a great bowl game. The 1972 season had the earliest starting date in Tennessee history. September 9, Grant Field, Atlanta, on national TV. Tennessee against rejuvenated Georgia Tech, fired up under a new coaching staff. Sophomores held the key to Vol hopes as the season began. The Vol offense shows men in motion, shifts, and moves the ball consistently. Like on this pass from sophomore quarterback Condridge Holloway to Oak Ridge, Tennessee's Emmon Love. The pass sets up this field goal by the barefoot boy from Dalton, Georgia, Ricky Townsend. A sophomore who became a legend in one week and kept the legend alive through a record-breaking season. Tennessee leads Georgia Tech three to nothing. Holloway is extra sharp on offense, but this play, an offensive mistake, might well have been Holloway's biggest play of the year. Tex McKenzie intercepts Holloway's pass in the flat and appears on his way to a Georgia Tech touchdown. But wait, that's Holloway streaking downfield to catch him from behind, and Tech has to settle for a field goal instead of a touchdown. The ball offense is rolling again. Bill Rutter, playing tailback in this game, hits the middle, then slips to the outside and pounds into the end zone from seven yards away to give the Vols a 10-point lead. Once again, Bill Rudder, named TV back of the week in the game, is in the spotlight. Only this time, the Winchester, Tennessee junior makes a rare passing effort, complete for a touchdown to junior Chip Howard from Knoxville, and the Vols are off and running. In the fourth quarter, junior Gary Valbuena is at quarterback, and he shows his rifle arm on this scoring pass to Love as the balls roll to an impressive season opening 34-3 win over Georgia Tech. The Vol defense was most impressive against Tech, too. Captain Jamie Rotella talks with ex-Vol Joe Thompson about Tennessee's defensive strategy. Fans look at the Tennessee defense, and it looks a little soft in the middle. Can you explain a little something about what you're trying to do with the look in there? Well, the reason for that is because usually we have three linebackers up in the middle, and it does look soft, uh, but we figure, you know, we can, we can give a team a few yards up the middle. That's not what's really going to beat you. We're mainly concerned with taking away the pass and taking away the outside game, and then 
then in, on short yardage, we come up with a, a short yardage defense to take the run away from them. So we will give them a few yards up the middle. Then the captain talks about the Vol offense. Our offense this year controlled the ball a lot more and did give us a chance on defense to rest a lot more and to play better ball. If you look at each game, they did move the ball up and down the field. We controlled most of the games we played, so that's a credit to our offense. The 1972 opening home game was the first night game ever played at Neyland Stadium. The largest crowd in Tennessee history, over 72,000 fans are on hand to see Tennessee play Penn State. And Shields Watkins Field shines like an emerald in the night. Haskell Standback sparkled too. Behind a brilliant block at the corner, the junior speedster turns it on in the first quarter and races 41 yards to give the Vols a lightning-like seven to nothing lead over the Nittany Lions. Penn State's All-America quarterback, John Huffnagel, an outstanding member of an outstanding team, faces a fierce Tennessee pass rush, is jarred by linebacker Eddie Wilson, Huffnagel fumbles, and Carl Johnson recovers to get the Vols in scoring position once more. In the second period, Steve Chancey of Knoxville makes one of the year's great runs as he fights for 22 yards to pay dirt. And the Vols open up a 21 to nothing halftime lead over Penn State. The Vols needed all those points and more because Penn State came back strong in the second half, gained the momentum, and closed the gap to 21 to 14. The pressure is definitely on the Tennessee offense to sustain a drive, to use the clock, to stop the Lion momentum and to get some points. Holloway gets things moving on an 80-yard drive with this 19-yard fourth period pass to tight end Sonny Leach. The Vols continue the final period drive. 13 plays, more than six minutes. Now it's second and goal at the state nine-yard line when the quarterback makes this miraculous pitch and stand back a daring catch, then sweeps to the Lion two-yard line. It's third down and goal as Standback swings around the left side for the touchdown, and Tennessee outbattles a fine Penn State 11, 28 to 21. Two crucial games, two impressive wins. Coach Bill Battle reflects on what his concerns were before the season started. Well, the thing that I was, uh, of course, obviously worried about was playing with a sophomore quarterback and some young players offensively. Senior members of the Vols voiced their opinions about Tennessee's offense in 1972. I felt like the most exciting part of our offense this year was the, the great amount of balance we had and the fact that we could score, we could drive the long drives, and we could put the ball in the end zone when we had to. We were really in, impressed with Conridge and, and Haskell. And I think the thing that excited me most about this group was that they were young. I mean, there was maybe a couple of seniors in the offensive line. There wasn't, wasn't a senior in the backfield. Tennessee rolls to its third win of the year over Wake Forest, 45 to 6. A game of big plays, scoring bombs, like this Holloway to Howard Ariel. Then came this 52-yard pass play from Valbuena to Knoxville sophomore Neil Claybo, who showed continuing improvement as the Tennessee punter all year long. But there was little time for celebration because the next Saturday, it was on to Birmingham for the traditional battle with Auburn at Legion Field. The Tigers, always tough. But I knew when Auburn came on the field and Tennessee came on the field that the game would go to the fourth quarter, which it did. Uh, we went in there. I don't think we were overconfident. We went in there with a 3-0 record and uh, played pretty good games against Penn State and Georgia Tech. Over 15,000 Tennessee fans were in Birmingham for the game, a game where field position was the key. Tennessee got good field position in the first quarter on this fumble recovery by Jamie Rotella at the Auburn 30. But the drive is thwarted by a 15-yard penalty against Tennessee, and then Auburn begins an 81-yard scoring drive. 
that carries into the second quarter. Auburn and its durable tailback, Terry Henley. 81 yards, 16 plays, 7 minutes. Henley carries the ball 10 consecutive times and ends the drive with this burst over left guard to give Auburn a 7 to nothing second quarter lead. Auburn gets only one first down in the second half, but this Valbuena to Chip Howard pass, a touchdown toss of 30 yards for the balls in the fourth quarter was not enough. Auburn upsets Tennessee 10 to 6. Well, we were all really uh, shocked that we had lost the game. Football's a funny game, but I think the most important aspect of it is sometimes you're going to get knocked down, but you have to get back up. And if you don't, you'll never be a winner. The Vols are now three and one as they make their annual trip to Memphis. The offense looks potent again against Memphis State as Stanback gives the Vols an early lead with this 25-yard run. But the play to be remembered was an interception by Art Reynolds, linebacker from Cincinnati. The interception was followed by a 96-yard return by Reynolds. A convoy of swifter Vols lead Reynolds into the end zone, and Tennessee beats Memphis State 38 to 7. Big play on defense. It's become a Tennessee tradition in itself. The seniors talk. If you throw our front four and our linebackers up against anybody, you couldn't find a group that was more consistent. They. Uh, they made the big plays when they had to, but when it got down to the grind, our front four and linebackers stuck in there like nobody else could. I think we realized that we didn't have the superstars that teams in the past have had, that no one was any game breaker themselves. We were all about on the same ability, so it was a unified effort, and I think that made us a little bit different. Just the feeling of knowing I was part of the team and uh, had accomplished what we accomplished was, uh, was a great feeling as a whole. Another overflow crowd was in Knoxville for the Tennessee-Alabama game. The high moment of the season. Almost. We played 58 minutes of uh, perfect football. Tennessee's perfectly prepared defense has stopped the heralded Alabama wishbone. Sophomore Mike Mormon is shown here as he gets to Bama quarterback Terry Davis for a four-yard loss. Then, early in the third period, with Tennessee behind three to nothing, the Tennessee defense makes yet another big play. Alabama fumbles on a pitch out. The ball lies wide open until Art Reynolds recovers just inside the sideline at the Alabama 29. Standback carries the ball six straight times. And on this fourth down play, the junior tailback powers his way for eight yards to the Alabama two. The tide leads three to nothing, but then on second and goal, Holloway fakes, keeps himself, and slides into the end zone. Tennessee leads Alabama seven to three. The Vols are dominating the game on defense and offense. As Standback races 22 yards on this run, key play in a drive which ended in a 36-yard field goal by Townsend to make the Tennessee lead 10-3. Then with two minutes to go, Steve Bachelia sets up a tying Alabama touchdown with this bruising 27-yard run. And only 36 seconds later, Davis scores another Alabama touchdown. And the tide turns defeat into victory over Tennessee 17-10. Coach Bill Battle. I think I tried to draw a comparison to maybe uh, pick our team up a little bit that uh, this experience although better a very bitter pill to have to swallow would have to be swallowed anyway because we couldn't give up we had a long way to go yet in the season and we had to maybe use this experience to help us and pull us close closer together and enable us to go on to a successful season and we ended up actually playing better ball towards the end of the season uh, instead of where maybe another team might have might have quit after that Alabama loss. The next week, 
Tennessee played host to Hawaii, starting the comeback after the shocking loss to Alabama. Hawaii was beaten 34-2, and the Vols started early, scoring on this first play of the game interception and touchdown runback by Conrad Graham. Then it was to Georgia, and the time for the Vols to test pride and toughness, the turning point of the season, especially for the offensive line. It was our job against Georgia to prove that, that we had a good offensive line and that we could come back after losing to a team like Alabama and play a good team like Georgia and prove ourselves in that ball game. The Tennessee offense regained some of its early season luster at Athens. Crisp line blocking was the keynote, opening the path for Rudder to romp for 10 yards. The hole is there once more as Stanback charges up the middle for 10 more yards in the first quarter. Straight ahead, the tone of this Tennessee-Georgia game is set. Tennessee scores early in the second quarter on this eight-yard screen pass from Holloway to hard-running Bill Rudder. Tennessee seven, Georgia nothing. The big play came from sophomore tailback Paul Carruthers of Lafayette, Georgia, behind a key block by freshman Terry Moore of Clinton, Tennessee. Carruthers turns the corner and turns on the speed to dash 56 yards to the Georgia 19. The touchdown comes on this 13-yard pass from Holloway to tight end Leach, and the Vols beat Georgia 14 to nothing. Tennessee's record is now six and two, as the Vols race onto Shields Watkins Field through the giant tee formed by the pride of the Southland Band before another sellout crowd. It's homecoming 1972, and Ole Miss has come to Knoxville. The Vol offense, which regains some sparkle in the Georgia game, continues to click as Holloway drills this 21-yard pass to Emmon Love in the second quarter. Five plays later, Stanback gets a brilliant block from Chansey, turns the corner, and culminates an 80-yard drive with this 16-yard touchdown run. Tennessee 7, Mississippi nothing. Bill Rudder, like Chancey, injured for much of the year, appears back at full tilt as the junior fullback powers 34 yards to the Ole Miss 20 in the third period. The Vols go on to score and build a 17-0 lead over Ole Miss. Again in this game, timely interceptions help stop the Rebel drive. Do interceptions just happen? You study it every day and you get to look for a certain tendency you know and you're going to hope that they're going to pass the ball every damn because you want to see the defensive backs go out there and intercept the passes interceptions really start start on monday you start planning the game you look at the uh the routes that they run you look at the receivers you're going to be covering but the main thing is that that we're all working together keying on the same keys and know exactly what the other man's thinking at all times and then when we play our different defenses, we key the same key and go to the positions so it will synchronize perfectly and, and just warn us, I guess. Tim Towns from Knoxville makes his first career interception in the Ole Miss game. Towns is almost as jubilant as his teammates, and he fully intends to hold on to the football from now on. Late in the game, Graham, who intercepts seven passes in 1972, makes another big one to ensure Tennessee's shutout for the second straight week. Tennessee beats Ole Miss 17 to nothing, and the Vols are seven and two with two games to go. The two games left are the traditional battles with Kentucky and Vanderbilt. Tradition, a big part of Big Orange football. And the things that have happened uh, 40 and 50 years ago affect us very much now through uh, how educated our fans have become to football and to winning football. And there's something about playing down there in front of 75,000 people 
every Saturday that that kind of pumps adrenaline up and makes you play that that much harder. I think that uh, the fans who will go anywhere in the country uh, to watch Tennessee play uh, are very much a part of our success at Tennessee. Kentucky's record was three and seven, but the Wildcats played like it was seven and three and grabbed a seven to nothing lead over Tennessee. But the Vols stormed back. First on this 49 yard pass play from Holloway to Love in the first quarter. Moving the ball from the Vol 40 to the Cat 11. The tying touchdown comes on this eight yard run by Rudder behind great blocking as the offensive line opens a big hole at right guard and Rudder rams it in to tie the score seven to seven. Tennessee gets the ball with 108 left to go in the first half and executes the two minute drill to perfection running six plays to set up this 46 yard field goal by barefooted Ricky Townsend his longest field goal of the year on the final play of the first half Tennessee leads 10 to 7. The clincher comes in the fourth quarter after an interception by the ever present Graham and it was the flashing standback who gallops 30 yards to score and gives Tennessee a hard fought 17 to 7 win over Kentucky. By beating the Wildcats at Knoxville Tennessee had won its eighth game for the eighth year in a row the only major college team in America to accomplish this feat. And then came the finale at Nashville against Vanderbilt. The Commodores grab an early three nothing lead but the Vols rest the lead away early in the second quarter on this nine yard run by Standback. Tennessee leads Vanderbilt seven to three. The Kannapolis junior gets his second touchdown moments later on this perfectly executed pitch from Holloway. Standback sets a new season rushing record of 890 yards in this game. Vanderbilt comes back closing the gap to 16 to 10 but the Tennessee offense mounts two fourth period drives to ice the victory. This pass play is good for 39 yards to senior Dennis Chadwick of Decatur Georgia. And it's the exciting Holloway who caps the ball victory as he hurdles into the end zone. And the Vols have a 30 to 10 win over Vanderbilt and a trip to the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl. Over 15,000 Vol fans followed Tennessee to their eighth straight bowl, the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl at Houston's Astrodome. And just as the Vol offense startled a national TV audience in the season opener against Georgia Tech, so the Tennessee offense startled millions during the first half of the bowl game with nationally ranked LSU. After an LSU field goal, the kickoff is taken by Eddie Brown, the SEC's leading punt returner. And the Gill Tennessee Jr. gets the Vols started with this 40-yard kickoff return. Moments later, sophomore quarterback Condridge Holloway gives LSU and the fans signs of things to come in the game as he scrambles for a 12 yard gain. Holloway, SEC sophomore of the year from Huntsville, Alabama, connects on this screen pass to Haskell Standback, and the junior tailback rips off 13 yards. Standback's run sets up this touchdown pass from Holloway to senior Jimmy Young from Franklin Kentucky and Tennessee grabs a first period seven to three lead over LSU. The Vol offense is sharp and the Tennessee defense is quick and determined. Here is senior in Carl Johnson a Palatka Florida product as he gets to LSU's All America quarterback Burt Jones for an eight yard loss. Defensive plays like this bottle up the Tigers early so LSU is forced to punt and the Vols are ready again for the big play as once again Eddie Brown this time behind a wall of blocking returns the punt 37 yards giving impetus to yet another Tennessee scoring drive. The razor sharp ball offense moves the ball swiftly and the drive is capped by Holloway who with deft and deceptive daring do dances 15 yards for the second first quarter touchdown 
Tennessee 14, LSU 3. The Tennessee offensive blitz continues in the first half as once more the ball defense throttles LSU. Here it's Bill Rudder, junior from Winchester, Tennessee, on a 21-yard screen pass and run. Tennessee's balanced attack continues into the second period as Stanback, all SEC tailback from Kannapolis, North Carolina, swings wide for an 18-yard gain at left end. And the balls leading 14 to nothing are threatening once more. The touchdown comes when Holloway, the darting sophomore, slips, slides, and slithers through grasping LSU defenders for the ball's third first-half touchdown. And the score is Tennessee 21, LSU 3. But the second half sees a turnabout, and LSU closes the gap to 24 to 17 and appears en route to another score when this pass by Burt Jones is broken up by Conrad Graham. The defense comes up with another big play, and the offense controls the ball, stalls the clock, and Tennessee wins its third straight bowl championship and its 10th game of 1972. Coach Bill Battle accepts the Blue Bonnet Bowl trophy. Holloway is named the outstanding back, and Carl Johnson the outstanding lineman in the game. So 1972 ended as it began for the Volunteers, on a high note of offensive excitement before another national TV audience. A fitting climax to a season spiced with brilliant offensive plays, long drives, long passes, long punt and kickoff returns. A season of big, big defensive plays, Interceptions, recovered fumbles, crucial and courageous defensive stands. 1972, for Tennessee players, coaches, and fans, another perfect example of the high, high moments of competition. I guess the most exciting thing is uh, just a few minutes or the last couple minutes of the Blue Bonnet Bowl and the things that flash back through your mind, uh, really the players, the seniors particularly, but all the players who contributed, worked so hard, sacrificed so much, and paid such a great price to be there. It's probably the biggest thing, biggest high point, being able to finish the season as a winner. 1972 Vol seniors finished as winners. Three bowl championships, Sugar, Liberty, Blue Bonnet a three-year record of 31 and five in the top 10 every year. To play with pride, the tradition which does indeed make Tennessee football different from all the rest.